Well, the powers that be have requested even more Squid Game content, uh, which isn't surprising since the little South Korean mind screw that could has taken the world by storm. <laughs> Here. This is 15 things only fans noticed in Squid Game. Let's dig in! First up, gotta mention the one you almost definitely figured out by the end of the series. All the games are hinted at from the very beginning of our player's time at what I'm just going to call Squid Island. If you look at the walls, it's pretty easy to make out what games are going to be played, although in order to really see them, you'd have to take a moment to move the beds and really look. Although I'm not sure what this would do to help, say, the bridge game, or to guess that your partner in marbles would be facing certain doom, uh, still, cool detail that any fan's eye is bound to be drawn to on a rewatch. This next one is something fans may have noticed and gotten totally wrong. See, when the guy from Train to Busan challenge, I know, I know his name is Gagyu, I'm not, I, it's just, you know, he's the Train to Busan guy. Anyway, when he challenges Jihun to Dokji, which is basically South Korean pogs for all my 90s brethren out there, he gives him two options, red and blue. A lot of fans have suggested that this is sort of a red pill, blue pill situation wherein the choice the player makes leads them to become either a player or one of the uniformed workers seemingly employed by the mysterious organization. Now this is supported by seemingly all of the players we see playing that initial game, choosing the blue card, as explained by TikToker Lucy What won. Unfortunately, creator Huang Dong Yuk was quick to quell the theorizing, saying that these fans are more creative than him and that the choice of colors comes from a restroom ghost story wherein a spirit asks a would-be pooper to choose between red and blue toilet paper. Can't make this stuff up. Uh, however, it's a trick question and both options lead to death, so really the choice of red or blue cards holds no value for the player. Either way, they're going to wind up in the same position. This works not only because it factors in with the more haunting themes of the show, but also because I now know that South Korea has poop ghosts. Alright, with that long entry out of the way, let's go fast. Get out of here, Sonic. When number one seemingly wets himself while sleeping, it appears he actually just emptied the water bottle he was given onto his pants as a means of furthering his own narrative. Or he just went through the natural methods, but this version seems more devious, so I'll take it. There's also the chance that number one isn't scanned, as seen in this blink and you'll miss it moment where he doesn't appear to have a green overlay in the robo POV. Now this is another big ol' maybe since the shot goes by so fast and there's also this lady who also doesn't appear to get scanned, suggesting it's actually a VFX oversight. Still, pretty suspect if you ask me. Anyway, let's get to some comments. Jordan mentions that in the moment when number one can't remember his own name, he's actually trying to throw his fellow players off his scent. Since he's a billionaire who's made his money off of debt collecting, there is that chance that people might know his name. Now, not to turn this into a disproving theories video, but it is entirely possible this is just him continuing the old guy who can't function right ruse. After all, why pretend to not know his own name to throw them off when he could just make up a new name? This guy could totally pull off a John Harrison. It worked for Khan. Wait, no, it didn't work for Khan. Everyone guessed that before the movie even came out. Ah, jeez. Mrs. Flowflo9, if that is her real name, pointed out something I completely missed but makes complete sense. When Jihan is going up the elevator to meet his malevolent ex-friend, he has to take it to the seventh floor, and the number is real hard to miss. What an, <laughs> what an awful elevator panel design. <laughs> Uh, so, but yeah, that's right, it, it's seven, as in the seventh game that Jihun has to play, with there being a total of six on Squid Island. And yes, I am really calling it that, I'm a very stubborn person. Commenter Brandon has noted some foreshadowing in the form of Jihun betting on horses in the beginning, only to become a horse of sorts himself when he's bet on by the VIPs. Side note, holy crap, screw those guys, am I right? I know y'all are just picking actors available in Korea who can say things in English, but man, that... Oh boy, that episode was really cringy. Like, that was more cringy than my videos. Like, next level Super Saiyan 3 cringe. I like you better when you don't talk. Oh, and uh, Sidney Pollock wants his eyes wide shut masks back, you jerks. 
Anyway, commenter Tiffany makes a great point about Sangwoo's final moments. Is it Sangwoo? Sangwoo. Sangwoo? I'm gonna say Sangwoo. When he goes to shuffle himself off this mortal coil, he sits soaked in a bathtub, still wearing his suit and everything. Now, what a lot of people don't notice the first time around, at least those without a decent knowledge of Korean culture, is that he's using a charcoal stove to kill himself via carbon monoxide poisoning. Sadly, this is a very common method in South Korea. So, the attempt at ending his own life while wet correlates directly to him ending his own life while wet. Now, this is one of my favorites that I picked up on, albeit in hindsight for obvious reasons. Lee Byung-hun, the famed South Korean actor known for several Hollywood roles, and because I have to bring this up every time, for being in the absolutely legendary I Saw the Devil, uh, plus the good, the bad, and the weird, and joint security area, and inside men. Uh. Look, dude's prolific, and I might have a crush on him. Point being, dude has a pretty notable special appearance as the frontman. Him showing up was not unlike Gong Yu showing up in the first episode. He's just super freaking famous, so much so his appearance is hinted at in the Forever Scarring All of Us episode 6, in which doomed player Ji Young quotes a line from Inside Men and when she can't remember the title, Lee Byung Hun's in it? Big ol' thanks to Jason in the comments for adding a little bit more depth to something I partially noticed while watching the first time through, the gift box that Ji-hun gives to his daughter, which hilariously contains a lifelike gun that's in fact a lighter. The obvious parallel here is that the box looks just like the coffin boxes used to carry out dead players. What gives this moment a bit more depth is that the lighter is potentially pointing out that the players are cremated. Okay, here's another wild theory that I don't necessarily agree with, but I can't help but enjoy. And which I'm sure fellow fans have loved dissecting during their rewatches. As commenter Charlie, as well as tons of other internet denizens have pointed out, number one could in fact be Jihan's father? Ooh. I, I know, I know, it, it's, it's pretty silly uh, and kind of melodramatic as a twist, but the clues actually are there, kinda. After Jihan refuses the milk, preferring the chocolate variety, number one says that his son hated milk as well. Now, on October 24th, he says his son's birthday is coming soon, and we see in this file that Jihan's birthday is October 31st. They both used to play in a similar neighborhood to the one during the Marbles game, and the gate to both number one's home and Jihan's are, uh, kinda similar, I guess. To me, this all reads as coincidence, but eh, who knows? A whole bunch of commenters pointed out that number one's file is missing with the current slate of players documents, starting with number two, when Junho is going through his whole spycraft phase. As Rose the Mad points out, Minyao's method of sweet, sweet vengeance against that douche canoe with the dumb tattoo involves her grabbing him and falling backward, directly referencing the line earlier in the show, following the tug of war game, wherein she says that it made her feel powerful. Se Biak's death is also set up earlier. She is, of course, brutally killed by a sneaky knife to the throat by Sang Woo. And what did she do in an earlier scene while out in the normal world? Well, she threatened this turd burger with a knife to the throat. The only way it could be any clearer is if she had somehow spilled coffee on herself during that fancy dinner, instead of, you know, her own blood. That glass shard was crazy big, by the way. I, I know I harped on the VIPs, but that's a real runner up for silliest moment in that episode. And finally, Junho also has his potential death set up earlier. He's of course shot by his own brother, and we last see him falling off a cliff, cementing the ineffectiveness of law enforcement in this unfair and cruel world. Earlier, he kills two separate workers in similar fashion. One is strangled and another is shot, with both being disposed of in the ocean. Going one step further, the latter was led to believe that Junho was on his team, or sort of a brother in arms, before being shot and killed after the truth is found out. Very similar to the situation on the cliff. Am I thinking too hard about this? Maybe. It's kind of my job. This is a show with plenty to explore, especially if we ever get good subtitles. Did you know that the reason Song Wu is so annoyed by Ali when the latter calls him sir is because in reality he's calling him boss? Yeah, between that and Min Yao's frequent mistranslations, I demand a new set of subs and another season. You explain this. I'm just a needy boy.